My father was born in 1913. Where he lived during his boyhood, there was no electricity, no cars, and he rode a horse to school. The first powered flight had taken place less than 10 years earlier. Spaceflight to the moon or Mars, crude or otherwise, was pure science fiction. And not even computers, let alone the internet, were, were on anyone's radar. Now it's a mere hundred years later, and all these and much more are reality. And he saw many of them come into being during his lifetime. If you're a young person in 2013, or for someone born in 2013, you or they can expect, expect to witness present science fiction become reality, as well as completely new things, not even dreamt of at present. The next hundred years will almost certainly see the first movements or mass movements of people off the Earth to live and work elsewhere in the solar system. You might even be one of them. Space tourism will likely become commonplace. Already there are a number of companies gearing up to offer flights to the edge of space, and there are soon to be opportunities to visit the International Space Station, if you can afford it. Even if human population stabilizes, and population pressures don't drive us off world, our insatiable need for raw materials will. We cannot keep digging up Australia and elsewhere forever. Mining operations may well be some of the first space ventures. Climate change and its effect on population dynamics across the globe may also be a factor. And of course, there is another reason. If humanity is to continue in the long term, it is just too risky to leave all our eggs in one basket. If anything happens to the Earth, and it could, we have no alternative and we need one. It is not a question of if, but only of when we'll experience another massive asteroid strike or a supervolcano eruption, perhaps from the giant magma plume lying below Yellowstone in the United States, the Yellowstone caldera. If a dying star many times larger than the sun were to go supernova in our vicinity, it could sterilize all life on Earth instantly. High energy particles destroying every living cell, even bacteria. Okay, it's not very likely, but it is possible. Then, as we know from Hollywood disaster movies, the sun itself could do the trick with a coronal mass ejection aimed at the Earth. Okay, colonizing outer space is all in the future, although probably closer than you've imagined. But living in space is a very different proposition to living on Earth. And right now is when we must start making the necessary preparations, not only to solve the immediate technical problems, but to begin to incorporate the idea of living in space into our world view. In reality, of course, preparations have been underway uh, for many years, as has research on the question of person-environment congruence in the context of living in space. Much of this research has taken place in so-called isolated, confined, extreme environments, ice environments on Earth, uh, particularly Antarctic base stations, but also prison camps, uh, remote mining and logging camps, transoceanic vessels and submarines, and of course, space capsule habitats themselves. Other research information has been uh, obtained from extreme and unusual environments, EUEs, which can be any environment that exposes people to extreme physical conditions that are outside the normal range necessary for human survival, and that are beyond uh, what the people involved have ever been accustomed to. EUEs can be temporary, such as occurs with a natural disaster, an accident, uh, such as the Tasmanian mine collapse in 2006, or a war situation. Of course, what is an EUE for one person may not be for another. Uh, for instance, we'd be likely to find the frozen lands of the Inuit people uh, an EUE. So lessons can be learned from people more acclimatised to extreme conditions. There can also be an overlap between the two types of extreme environments. Uh, being alone in a mountain hut uh, or on an unpopulated island would constitute an ice environment in an EUE, as does the capsule environment that occurs in space and in deep sea contexts 
as well as polar research and exploration stations. This type of environment has the most relevance to future space exploration and the likely expansion of the human species into space-based habitats in the future. Our present expectations are for human habitats on the Moon and other planets such as Mars. Increasingly being considered are mining camps on asteroids given they look like being good sources of uh, minerals and other resources. Even more likely, however, are space-based uh, built habitats of which the International Space Station, shown around me here, uh, represents a first step. Given that psychological factors are a significant component in addition to physical ones when it comes to humans uh, being able to live in ice environments, space psychology is even now emerging as a sub-discipline in its own right. And for psychology students, this could even become a career path uh, for you at some point in your working life. I have to say, I'd be kind of envious of anyone who uh, can go down that track. <laughs>